Hi, welcome to Linda's Take on Office. Today we are going to be looking at PowerPoint, particularly um, Chapter 5 PowerPoint, the Waring Lake Development Presentation. We're going to be looking at how to change comments and how to change our timings on our smart art animation, just to name a few. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and follow me so that you can be notified when I have new videos. So let's get going with our PowerPoint Chapter 5. I have already downloaded my instructions and my PowerPoint presentation and I've saved it and I'm ready to start making some changes to my presentation. You'll notice here in the slides, right down here, we have um, some text and the test text is actually off the sides of my PowerPoint slides. So if I was actually giving this presentation, some of my text would be missing from my slide. So I want to change my slide size. So I'm going to come up here to my design tab and over here on the right, I have slide size and right now we're at standard and we're going to change it to widescreen. So now when I do that, you can see all of my text is going to appear on my slide. Now we're going to add sections to our presentation and our sections is just an easy way to work in our PowerPoint presentation. You can actually reuse slides just from a section of the presentation if you want instead of an entire presentation. To do that, we're going to come down here and we're going to change to the slide sorter view down here at the bottom of our window. You have our option for slide sorter. And we want to put a section in between one and two. We want to have a department activities section. So I'm going to select and just click right in between slide one and slide two. I'm going to right click there and right here I have add section. And I'm going to name this department activities. And I'm going to select rename. So now I have these three slides in here. Um, if I want to change the transitions just on these three slides, I can do it all at once. It just makes it easier to work in a presentation, especially if it's a real large one. Now our untitled section, we want to name it events. And so I can just right click on that title and rename it. I'm going to rename this events. You can collapse your sections so that you don't see the thumbnails of the slides. By do it, to do that, I'm just going to click on the little arrow right next to the names. And you can see how this could come in really handy in a large presentation. We can also change the order of just the sections. We want the events section to be the very last section. So I can just click on it and drag it down. And now I've actually changed the order of my slides. If I want to open up and see the thumbnails, I'm just going to click on that little arrow and now they all come back. To change back to the normal view, I can either go to the view tab, select normal, I can come down here to the bottom of my window and select normal, or I can double click on one of the slides and it's going to take me back to the normal view. Comments come in very handy when you are creating a presentation and you're collaborating with some other people in your office, you can make comments on individual slides. To do that, we're going to come up here to the review tab and say, click on the show comments. This is open our comments pane. This is going to allow us to see comments that are already in the presentation. It's also going to allow us to make new comments. We want to add a new comment to slide one. So on over here on our comments pane, I'm going to select new and I want to tell them that this is so beautiful. So I'm just going to type that in and then hit enter to enter that comment into our presentation. Going to slide two, you can see we already have a couple of presentations here. And right here, it would have your name if you were the one actually doing it. Um, right here, 
we want to add economic before interest. That's the, the recommendation somebody's made, and we like that idea. So we're going to come up down here to bullet two, and right in front of interest, we're going to add the word economic. And then in our reply section of our comment, we're going to let them know that we think that's a good idea. So just type in the text and hit enter. One of the cool things about PowerPoint is if you know how to make changes to like bullet lists or your font, uh, do find and replace, if you did that in Word and you remember how to do it, you already know how to do it in PowerPoint. It all works the same way. So if you want to add text, change text, just kind of click in it, type in it. If you need to change the font size, just double click and select it and make changes. So you're revisiting the skills that you learned in Word. Now here in our second comment, we want to change the word business to networking. So I'm just going to click on that comment and now you can see I can edit it and make changes. So I'm going to double click on the business and I'm going to add change it to networking. And I'm going to come down here to slide four and we don't want this comment anymore. So we're just going to click on this X, the universal sign for closing. So we're going to click on that to delete that comment. And then we're going to close the comment pane. Now on slide three, we want to change the line spacing of our bullet points so that it is 1.5. So to do that, we're going to first select the text in our smart art area. We're going to come up to the home tab and here in our paragraph grouping, we have the little uh, paragraph box here. We're going to select that option and we have all these. We can change the alignment here. We can change the indentation and the spacing before and after as well as our line spacing. We're going to change that to 1.5 lines. Then we're going to do that again down here in our second box. So what we've done is we've spread our text out so that it's easier for our audience to see. Now on slide four, we don't want to have the numbered bulleted list. We want to change that to the ABC style of bulleted list. So we're going to select our bulleted list and up here in our paragraph grouping, we're going to click down and select our numbered list bullet options. And we're going to select the ABC option to make that change. We want to change how our picture looks on our slide. So we need to first select the picture and that's going to bring up our picture formatting tab. So when I select the picture formatting tab, I have these picture styles. We want to change this to the metal oval picture style. So I'm going to come down here and select the more option for picture styles and the metal oval style is the very last one in our choice list. We also want to add some alt text. Now remember, alt text is going to create desk descriptions of our graphic for screen readers. So we're going to add alt text, cool graphic for economic development. We're going to close the alt text pane and we're ready to go to slide five. On slide five, we already have a bulleted list, but you can tell the text is very, very small. So if I select it, it lets us know that that text is nine point. As a general rule, you want your text on your slide to be 14 point or larger. And again, that depends upon the size of the room where you're presenting at as well. This is way too small. Uh, our audience wouldn't be able to see it. So we want to change it. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this into columns. So I'm going to select 
all of this text. And up here in my paragraph grouping, I have my option to add or remove columns. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to come down here to more columns. I want to have two columns of text. And I want the spacing between my columns to be 0.6. I'm going to say OK. And you can see our text is now larger and it's easier for our audience to see. The other thing that we're going to do on this list is that we want to change those blue bullets and we want to make them red arrows. So we're going to come up here to our bullets options. And if you come down here to the bullets and numbering at the bottom of our box, we can here, we can select the bullet. We want this arrow bullets. And we can change the size of our bullet. Right now it's 100% of our text size. We want to change it to 110. We want to make it just a little bit larger. And we want to change the color of our bullet. We want to make it red accent 6. And we're going to say OK. And we've changed our slide, it's much easier for our audience to read and see, and we've given it a little bit more pizzazz by changing that blue bullet to that red arrow. Find and Replace works the same in PowerPoint, just like it does in Word and Excel. So on the Home tab, we have our Replace option here, and we can tell it exactly what to look for. In this case, we want it to find the word Enterprises. And any time it sees that word in our presentation, we want it replaced with businesses. And we can just say replace all, and it's going to find one replacement. I'm going to say OK. And then we need to close our little dialog box. The very last slide, we have our smart art. And on this one, we want to dim the animation that's applied to our smart art diagram. And um, we also want to delay it. So we know we have some animation applied to the slide because we have this little star next to our slide number over here in our pane. If we want to see exactly what type of animation is on our slide, we can come up here to the Animations tab. And we're going to come clear over here on the right and select Animation Pane. And it's going to bring up a box to where it lets us know that we have animation on our title placeholder. And it actually, if you put your mouse over, it'll tell you which animation it has. And you can see it, the next animation we have is on our content placeholder, which is where our smart art is located at. If we select the second one, can see we have this little arrow that pops up that's going to give us access to more options that we can change in our animation. We can um, change when we're starting it. We're going to leave it to after previous, which means that after the title one animates, then our smart art is going to animate. We're going to come down here to effect options. See we have our effect. We have different directions we can choose from. And if you look at the directions, you see we have a lot of different ones. Now, the, these effects are going to change depending on the animation style you're using. This is where on the fly-in animation, so these are all the different changes we can have here. We want to make sure that that one stays from bottom. We can also change how it actually moves in our animation. Down here we could add sound. Then right here after animation we're telling it don't dim. Don't do anything. We want to change that. We want it to go to blue after it animates. So if I click on this little arrow right here I can change to blue and after the animation on my smart art it's going to go blue. The next op tab we have in our box is the timing and you can see right now it's set to start after previous which means it's going to come after our title placeholder but we 
want it to wait one second before it actually starts. So after the title appears, wait a second and then start the animation on our smart art. So I need to change that delay to one. This duration is how fast the smart art itself is going to animate between the different uh, objects in the smart art. We're going to leave that alone and we're going to leave repeat alone. We want it once it goes once, that's all we want. So we're going to say OK. And you can see we get a preview of what our animation would look like. So once we're satisfied with our animation, we can just close our animation pane. And we are ready now to save our presentation. We're going to close it and we're ready to submit it for grading. So we've submitted our presentation and we're ready to look at our graded report. And the graded report for PowerPoint comes in the form of PowerPoint. And when it opens, if we go to the very last slide in our presentation, it's going to give you your score. And I missed two points. What happened? I must have misplaced, misspelled networking. So I come back up here to slide two. I'm going to enable editing. I'm going to go to the review tab to look at the show comments pane. And yeah, I misspelled networking. So make sure you spell your words correctly. If I wanted to, I could open open up the original PowerPoint presentation, make go back in, change this so that it's spelled correctly, and resubmit it um, to get a higher grade. Thank you for joining me today as we looked at PowerPoint Chapter 5 and learned more about the comments and changing the timing on animations and the importance of spelling words correctly in your PowerPoint presentation. Again, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel, my channel and follow me so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. I hope wherever you're at today that you've had some sunshine in your life, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.